Carla House going to introduce these price controls today. Do they work? No, they don't work. They've never worked. The only reason why you even propose this is because you're trying to run away from your own economic record of the Biden-Harris administration. And now they want to put their boot on the neck of companies. What you'll see if she has her way are, are lower supplies of goods and services to people who need them most. This stuff has never worked in any country and at any time in the history of the world, let alone the history of the United States. Congressman Byron Donalds, great American, Republican from Florida. And uh, why is it that Kamala Harris doesn't know what Byron Donalds knows? How can that be? Does Kamala have access to high-speed internet, or is she waiting for a government program to bring that along for her? By the way, absolute chaos, anarchy, violence at a Kamala Harris event in New York City last night. And uh, on Monday, the Democratic National Convention begins in Chicago. I hope you're going. It, it's going to be a riot. Bada boom. Gonna be a riot. Uh, my friend Brian Doherty just uh, sent along a, a useful article. I should uh, forward it to Kamala Harris. National Panhandler Radio suckling on the taxpayer teat and a story actually from October 29 of 2015. 2015, coming up on a decade ago, uh, out of Venezuela. The Nightmare of Grocery Shopping in Venezuela. And the first picture is uh, people looking desperate with empty grocery store shelves. And some people are stealing stuff because, you know, they put in price controls. And the story goes on and on and on in the usual left-wing, long-winded, taxpayer-funded way, telling a story of Annie Valero, a mother of uh, three children, who goes to the grocery store when it's open Uh, the government-run supermarket where they sell price-controlled food, making them far cheaper than private stores. But Valero explains that the people are allowed in state-run supermarkets just two days per week based on ID card numbers. System is designed to prevent shoppers from buying more than they need, and the state will tell you how much you need, and then reselling goods on the black market at a huge markup. You see, because they... They fixed everything in Venezuela, just like Kamala Harris wants to do here. They made everything better. And uh, they tell a story about leaving their little girls, seven and nine years old, locked in their slum apartment, uh, not going to school because it's too dangerous to go out while mom goes grocery shopping. And at that point, uh, they bring along their six-month-old son and uh, turns Turns out that her husband occasionally shows up. Yes, uh, it's uh, Yasmi Benaventi, and uh, he uh, skipped work at the auto repair shop to go look after the baby and to ward off thieves who steal people's grocery bags after they go shopping, you know, at the state-run store. Because, uh, honestly, Venezuela is the most oil-rich and the wealthiest country in Latin America. And then Hugo Chavez took over, nationalized the oil industry, destroyed the economy. Uh, And then, you know, the uh, price fixing for food. And here's a long story from NPR about what a nightmare it is trying to go to the grocery store. And it's all traceable back to price fixing. Isn't that amazing? All right, let's take a, uh, I've got a lot more uh, to get to on Austin Powers, too. Let's go uh, back to the telephones, though. Let's go to Phil, calling from Chicago, Illinois. Philip, thanks for hanging in there, my friend. You're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, Chris. I can't get enough of your show, and I love the way you explain stuff. <laughs> I hate listening to some of them people you play. They're, they're like uh, pandering to communism. It's it's a sad thing, like the one guy earlier. You can tell he never worked a day in his life. He's a trust fund baby from, uh, you know, places like Oak Park and Evanston. It's real sad. And I supply farmers. I, I'm an owner-operator, I've, and I've never seen an economy worse than this in my entire life. I'm 52. You know, you're old enough, and I'm old enough. 
to know when they used to t- keep saying, oh, slow down in America back in the 70s and 80s, and, and we have lost everything from education and to uh, manufacturing and everything else, especially under Clintons. And the biggest problem with radio shows like yours is the youth under 30 never heard of it. Then again, they never heard of anybody from World War II. They have no idea. And they're very happy to go along with this stuff, and it's very scary. They think it's responsible. When you listen to these people talk, and, oh, yeah, I'm socialist. Well, and so are the Nazis. You know, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And so are the communists. And you think about all the world's murders are because of communism. And when you talk about price fixing, we had, nothing's gotten more expensive. The dollar fell through the through the floor. We used to be gold backed, and now we're going to have 15 countries drop the dollar while we have no manufacturing base and no education on the kids. What can they make? Our grandparents were able to work out of it. They can't. Yeah, and uh, you know, you you nailed it all over the place, uh, Phil. I got to say, I mean, you know, the education we don't. We don't teach uh, anything in schools anymore because the left, like an invading army, took over the schools, literally took over the media and the schools like an invading army would do. What they've done, what the left has done in the United States is a slow motion invasion of the United States of America the way that the Soviet Union would have taken over with the military, taking over the radio stations, NPR, the TV stations, CNN, MSNBC, then the educational system. It's what invading armies do, and they don't teach. They teach anti-American history. They don't teach about the importance of the United States and the shining city on the hill and so on. Yes, it was like with Clinton, Clinton and Rockefeller's Common Core, mandatory in 50 states. Then we got all these communist member uh, teachers. The, the, where they get the highest dropouts, biggest drug rates, biggest uh, molestation rates, and, and all this other stuff. It's, it's absolutely uh, uh, nauseating. When I talk to young kids, there a lot of them are hungry for information. I have five kids of my own, and they just don't get anything in schools. The only time that like the public schools teach anything about history. Uh, is when they when the teachers are worried about their jobs and the kids have to pass the constitution test and they give the kids the answers because they're worried about their jobs they won't get they won't lose their jobs that union job when they're abusing kids but they'll lose their jobs if they don't pass that test which is like ironic because none of these kids even understand any of the history that came to the constitution and then they have no outlook on what jobs were like back when we were younger where you can go across the street and get a job right now I've never been this scared in my life. Every single warehouse I go to is locked down, empty, or their or, or, their, or the leases are seventy five grand a month for ten doctors with the tax raise during COVID, and then and then the things that are moving are you know government subsidized or or um, you know big huge companies like Walmart or things like this. It's just out of control. It's scary. To, it's scaring me to death for my kids and for the kids of our country because we're like. Uh, asleep and you know yep. they dropped this dollar i cannot see us working out of this i cannot we don't have any more manufacturers here yeah we don't we have nothing everything and then we're doing it at chinese gunpoint with uh clinton arming china with all their nuclear bombs and you think about that you know it's like they're and he had them all set up so the bombs are aimed at every american major american city and, 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 and forced everybody into the Council on Foreign Relations, the same with media and Hollywood. And that's why everybody's so brainwashed and everybody's so lost, because how do you teach your kids all this in a matter of, like, you know, I don't know, half an hour, two hours, and you show them this stuff, and then they got a bunch of questions, they go back to their libtard schools, and they end up, uh, you know, having the same perspective as, like, the guys you played on the radio earlier in the show. Yeah. 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 We don't teach right and wrong. We don't teach values. We don't teach good versus evil. The left, the communists, the first thing they do is erase religion, uh, faith, Christian yeah, faith. They God out. That's right. They uh, get rid of God. And then, you know, you mentioned education. And I'm always reminded of William Ayers, a communist terrorist uh, who's part of a, yeah. a cop killer uh, bank robbing organization. <laughs> William Ayers gets uh, nailed. Uh, for his terrorist acts, the FBI botches the prosecution. And now he's teaching the University of Chicago. A, a tenured okay. university with his uh, terrorist, communist terrorist bride, um, uh, although I don't think they ever married, uh, Bernadine Dorn, and they get tenure at a major American university's literal communist, literal terrorists 
with terrorist organizations that literally murder police officers and, you know, rob um, uh, armored cars for the revolution, of course, for the communist revolution. Yeah, yeah. The, weather, the, weather, the Weather Underground, part of uh, Obama's group as well. And they're, and they're teaching my siblings. My siblings all got full rides to the University of Chicago. A lot of my cousins and my and other cousins got, you know, full rides to other Ivy League colleges. And it, it is just disgusting. And half these idiots that are teaching also have, like, you know, CIA jobs on the side and other government jobs and environmental catastrophe jobs. It's, it, they're subsidized to death. Subsidized to death. It is very scary. And then, and then you got a guy on the radio earlier complaining how we're talking about price gouging and we don't have enough communism or socialism. It's not price gouging. Our dollar went through the floor. Right. Yeah, they've got everything backward. Uh, the left is completely backward, and uh, they have uh, devalued the currency of American citizenship with their open borders and waving the Venezuelan gangs in. And we've got uh, rapists from all over the world marauding around the United States of America. And uh, the news media doesn't care because... In my opinion, in my opinion, that's a continuation of Clinton's NAFTA. That's why they call themselves progressive, because every time they're in... They start at their last benchmark, and they keep progressing forward towards communism. And when you look at you look at the the trilateral banks and the CFR and the and the and the, and the uh, endless border crisis, it's just a continuation of NAFTA. They they have to do it slowly, like the frog in the pot, so that we don't revolt as a as a large group of uh, over four hundred armed four hundred million armed citizens. Yeah, well, and you know that there uh, there is what well, there's a uh, there's a story out of uh, Florida today that my. My friend Tom sent me, as a matter of fact, yet another assault on religious freedoms, religious liberties in the United States. You know, if you're a high school coach in Washington or Oregon, I think he was in Washington, you want to say a quick prayer after a high school football game, the Democrats will take you to the Supreme Court to try to prevent you (laughs) from saying a prayer. Yet they promote and support and endorse the after-school Satan clubs on campuses that's and right. and That's they're right. actually good. You know, they're Satan worshiping, devil worshiping, anti God, and this is a communism thing up the yin yang, of course. But the uh, uh, USA Today paper in Florida called Florida Today has got a, a story. A story today: National nonprofit criticizes baptisms at Titusville School, and it's the Freedom from Religion Foundation. They found <laughs> that there were baptisms taking place. Um, of football players on the the school's field, and you got this left wing organization that comes in, and they're going to try to drain the bank accounts of the school system to prevent them from engaging in Christianity, which, uh, if I remember correctly, is protected by the First Amendment. Uh, but they don't believe in the First Amendment. They don't believe in your right to free speech. They don't believe in your right to freely practice your religion. They don't believe in your second they amendment. Even, they don't even understand they don't even understand it. It's the right to assemble you to in front of your government. So cuz everywhere else you write you have a, you go in front of your government and disagree with them they either jail you or prison you. It's not to pervert the meaning so we can uh, urinate on crosses or molest kids. It's it's, right. <laughs> it's the right to assemble without dying. That was the whole purpose of the Second Amendment in case one of those government employees disagrees with you. <laughs> in case the First Amendment doesn't work out as planned. Uh, Phil, That's right. I um, I thank you for the call. You... Uh, you know, you know what you're talking about, and you care, and I and I uh, I appreciate that. I I got to tell you, I've got RFK Jr. coming up. I, I have it uh, right here in my hand, right here in my hand. RFK Jr. is uh, what what he said about uh, his his father's party and his uncle's party. You know, Robert Kennedy, uh, the senior, and John F. Kennedy, both assassinated, and uh, he uh, he's got a thing or two to say. I've got an interesting story on him coming right up. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you, Phil. You know that the best-selling Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier uses Oxy technology, and Oxy technology helps to quickly destroy viruses and odors and some mold spores, some nasty, nasty odors in the air. Thousands of five-star reviews online. It works like a champ. Any smell will vanish in seconds with the thunderstorm being on. Doesn't matter what you got there. Dirty diapers, left-wing protesters, you know, uh, Kamala voters. No match for the powerful Eden Pure thunderstorm. And their O3 molecules. 
seeks out and destroys. The molecules even go behind and underneath furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. And you don't have to buy filters over and over again like you have to do with a lot of air filters. Now, you can save $200. Right now, today, you can save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. Or you can make one a gift, too. You get three units for under $200. Put one in your basement, in your bedroom, any place, any place you like to have clean, fresh air. All you have to do is go to EdenPureDeals.com and use the discount code CHRIS3 to save $200 American dollars. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is CHRIS and the number three. Yeah, what do you hear this, uh, Robert Kennedy? Uh, I think that he is a uh, certified member of the Democrat Party. What does he have to say about his own party? Uh, that is coming right up. Now, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is actually still running for president as an independent. He, he tried to set up a meeting last week with Kamala Harris and her campaign. Wanted to talk about endorsing her, throwing his uh, support behind her, perhaps in exchange for a position as a cabinet secretary in her, her hypothetical administration. Uh, the Kamala Harris campaign told him to go screw himself, and that didn't amuse him. So... He, uh, he wrote a couple of thoughts down. He said, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. now, said, VP Harris's Democratic Party would be unrecognizable to my father and uncle, Robert F. Kennedy and John F. Kennedy, and I cannot reconcile it with my values. The Democratic Party of RFK and JFK was the party of civil liberties and free speech. VP Harris's is the party of censorship, lockdowns, and medical coercion. Kennedy Democrats were anti-war. Kamala's is riddled with neocon warmongers. Now, I've been saying for years that uh, today today's Democrat Party is closer on the political spectrum to Lee Harvey Oswald, the Cuba-loving communist, than they are to John F. Kennedy, who would be to the right of Mitt Romney in today's political context, and that today's Democrat Party, and it's never been more true than it is today, is closer on the political spectrum to Sirhan Sirhan, anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian. Sirhan Sirhan is Palestinian, a Palestinian Christian, and he shot and killed Robert F. Kennedy because Kennedy was too pro-Israel, honestly. The RFK, JFK Dems were allies of Main Street, cops, firefighters, and working people. VP Harris's party is the party of Big Tech, Big Pharma, and Wall Street. I don't think he's with them anymore. Huh. In terms of the traditional democratic principles, I don't think she has a credible record. I think you know, Kamala Harris is the party of war. She is, uh, she's a war hawk. On, you know, the Democratic Party was always the peace party. Uh, Kamala Harris is a, a war hawk on Ukraine. She's a war hawk on, on China. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, I don't think he's quite had enough of his political party, but... I think he's close, very close. And he did write in a very lengthy tweet, you know, my dad, Robert uh, Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, and uncle, John F. Kennedy, their party was the champion of voting rights and fair elections. VP Harris is the party of lawfare, disenfranchisement, and the coronation of its candidates by corporate donors and party elites. That's a fact. My father and uncle prided themselves on their skills at debate and their ability to articulate a coherent vision for our country. VP Harris is scared to debate and can't survive an unscripted interview. Neither can Joe Biden. Instead of outlining a vision, she relies on middle school tactics, memes, forged headlines, infantile slogans like joy, and name-calling like Republicans are weird. Yeah, while well, you guys are dressing up in your mother's clothes and 
uh, severing your genitalia, genitalia, throwing it into a ball jar. Goes into a ball jar. Where else would you put it? You put it in a ball jar. I have no plans to endorse Kamala Harris for president. I do have a plan to defeat her. We don't see a lot of evidence of that plan to defeat her, but setting that aside, isn't that amazing? Uh, oh, there was a uh, there was a Democrat Party event in uh, New York last night. It was a Kamala event, and it naturally got violent because the Nazis hate the Jews. They hate the Jews. What's well, with these people? Fox News has the story, and the Washington Post doesn't because it's not a news organization. Chaos erupts at Kamala Harris NYC event as DNC braces for Chicago unrest. That's uh, that everybody has to abbreviate everything. It's the New York uh, uh, City and the Democratic National Convention, which uh, is also the Democratic National Committee, the DNC and the DNC because they decided to combine those anti-Israel agitators hurled smoke bombs and expletives in Harlem Wednesday night after a pro-Kamala Harris campaign party in what could be a preview of planned demonstrations in Chicago next week, where the Democrats will hold their 2024 convention. It was, of course, night before last and not night... Not last night, I apologize. The kafia-wearing mob barged into a packed restaurant, accusing people at the bar of setting Palestine on fire in an apparent reference to Israel's counteroffensive in the Gaza Strip after the Hamas terror attack and savage massacre, the biggest massacre of Jews since World War II, still holding hostages. But Democrats are out here dressing like terrorists and attacking Jews. Video shows the bartender making a phone call as patrons tried to ignore the interruption, but that became somewhat difficult. You is mad? You looking for his man? You are You said Palestine on fire. You looking for his man? Where is man at? I think Palestine should be on fire. That's right. We all have a responsibility to stand up against American citizens. American citizens are paying for this genocide. How dare you? One side is genocidal in this, and that is Hamas. And the Democrat Party is in bed with Hamas. They're dating. And uh, it's an amazing thing. The NYPD showed up, and I saw you can see in the video they're putting handcuffs on Democrats and dragging them away. Now we've dragged it outside, outside the restaurant. What you saw, what you saw the NYPD dealing with on the streets of New York in response to the Democratic rally to endorse Kamala Harris is a preview of what law enforcement in Chicago will be dealing with next week at the Democratic National Convention said John McCurry, a retired NYPD lieutenant, and he's got a police podcast. Soft on crime, blue city laws and policies have emboldened agitators and those looking to incite riots during protests. Uh, 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 man, oh, man. Kamala Harris didn't even attend this event, but it was a pro-Kamala event, so the Jew haters showed up. They should really be wearing armbands. And uh, they caused thousands of dollars in damage to uh, the small business where the event was held, according to the New York Post. The New York Times doesn't cover it because they're not a news organization. Yes, sir. Yeah, but RFK Jr. says, VP Harris's Democratic Party would be unrecognizable to my father and uncle, and I cannot reconcile it with my values. That's okay, though, because, you know, Democrats, you know what they're all about. It's a violent party. It's a criminal party. It's an anti-Semitic party. It's a racist party. Not a good party. It's not a fun party. It's not a party you want to go to. Man, oh, man, I'm telling you. 
Let's go to soundbite number nine. So we were talking, Michael Pierce and I were talking before the big radio show this morning, and like, well, what is this Kamala thing and the Democrats now? What is this? What does this remind you of? And one of the things that it reminded us of was uh, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. A lot's happened since you were frozen. The Cold War's over. Well, finally those capitalist pigs will pay for their crimes, eh? Hey, comrades, hey! Austin, we won. Oh, groovy, smashing, yay, capitalism. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was that he had, uh, you know, he had uh, spent, uh, the, what was it, 100 years frozen or uh, something like that, and he woke up, hey, the Cold War is over. Um, I thought we had won. Turns out we didn't really win the Cold War because the left, they live on, and they're like the Chinese communists. They plan on taking over the world in the next 100 years, and the, the Soviet communists had a 100-year plan, too, and a uh, huge part of that was taking down the United States of America and taking down capitalism. Capitalism itself, we are now $34 trillion in debt. See the Cloward and Piven strategy, a couple of radical left-wing college professors that decades ago uh, put together a plan to destroy capitalism in the world by bankrupting the United States, sending us into uh, debt that would be unsustainable. Capitalism would collapse Communism would take over. Now we're $34 trillion in debt. Would take more than a million years to pay it off if we started paying it off at a dollar a second. It would take more than a million years. Uh, President Reagan was a uh, jovial and cheerful sort, and, and he recognized that communism was bad. Now, how do you tell a communist? I said, well, it's someone who reads Marx and Lenin. And how do you tell an anti-communist? It's someone who understands Marx and Lenin. Ronald Reagan understood everything. They hated Ronald Reagan, too. They hated him with a, a fiery passion because he was correct about everything, and, and he was pro-American and, and pro-capitalism and recognized that we continued to be that bright, shining city on a hill, the beacon of light, of freedom that would save the world And the left doesn't want to save the world. It wants to enslave the world. They want more people stoning women to death and flogging women in public like their friends in the Taliban, who they continue to fund, by the way. But never mind that. Nora O'Donnell of uh, CBS Fake News. In 2020, uh, when uh, Kamala Harris was running for something and Joe Biden was in the basement and and, uh, hey, are you a uh, uh, progressive like Woodrow Wilson, who was a dedicated racist and supporter of the KKK and racially segregated the U.S. military? Uh, or are you a socialist like Lawrence O'Donnell and Bernie Sanders? Is that a socialist or progressive perspective? No. <laughs> Why are you cackling? No, it is the perspective of, of a woman who grew up a, a, a black child in America who was also a prosecutor, who also has a mother who arrived here at the age of 19 from India, who also, you know, likes hip hop. <laughs> like, what do you want to know? What's funny about that? What, was there anything funny in there? I think she is on drugs or uh, maybe a Tardo of some kind. She's, uh, I love this, uh, you know, black woman in America. Your mother came from India and became a tenured college professor, university professor. Your father came from Jamaica and became a Ph.D. and a tenured college professor. Uh, you didn't exactly grow up in you know, some hard scrabble existence like J.D. Vance did, for example, who's white and did go to Iraq while wearing a Marine Corps uniform, uh, unlike your fraudulent VP pick. Never mind that. Chris Matthews, remember uh, Chris Matthews? Talking to then DNC chair, Debbie was a man schnitz. Debbie was a man schnitz. That's uh, Wasserman uh, Schultz, Debbie Wasserman. And uh, she was the DNC chair, member of the House of Representatives, and uh, had her makeup tattooed on in Redondo Beach, California, 1975. Turns out that was a really bad idea. Uh, Chris Matthews talking to his pal, Debbie was a man schnitz, DNC chair. What is the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? (laughs) I used to think there was a big difference. What? What do you think it is? Used to. 
the difference between the Democrat, like Hillary Clinton, the more and socialist like Bernie is Sanders. What's the difference between uh, being a Democrat and being a Republican? Well, what's the bigger this, difference? What's the big difference between a Democrat and a socialist? Evading, the the dodging. Party. Tell me the difference between you and a socialist. The, the relevant debate that we'll be having over the course of this, this, this campaign is what's the difference between a Democrat a big and a Republican? I think it's a huge difference. Yeah, that's a, that, it, she doesn't have an answer to that because they're kami, 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 chameleons. And they've been edging this way and edging this way, and they've just jumped into the hot tub, honestly. Howard Dean, remember him? He was uh, also DNC chair, and uh, as was Debbie was a man Schnitz, and he knows what the difference is between capitalism and socialism. I think the debate for the new generation, instead of capitalism or socialism, is we're going to have both, and then which proportion of each should we have in order to make this all work? It's a much more sensible debate. Yes, much more sensible debate, commies. Uh, we should probably take a phone call. I haven't taken a phone call in quite a while. And uh, I haven't gotten to the Kamala audio saying uh, crazy things. But let's talk to, uh, let's go to Jeff calling from Herndon, Virginia. Jeffrey, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi, Chris. Hey, uh, great comments on uh, My favorite topic is uh, the Cold War and communism. You know, we defeated the Soviet Union. The communists just scurried away into the universities, as you know, and a lot of people have heard. And they scurried into the government offices where, you know, the Clintons were busy making more and more jobs for, uh, for communists to hide out in. And, uh, and here we are. You know, we, and over the last 20 years, I think it's striking how well they, uh, they, they continue to talk about Russia, Russia, Russia over the last 20 years. Yeah, they kept our uh, us distracted from the uh, Chinese mono, uh, behemoth now yep. that we created from both a war in Iraq that we shouldn't have been uh, waging because it was a perfect situation that we had said that George uh, Bush the first set up and uh, and uh, um, and the Russia 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 stuff. It's total distraction of the American people. So. China went from like one trillion GDP in 2000 to uh, what they are now is about 18 trillion and threatening us everywhere, and yet we still have people attempting to say Russia, 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 and trying to get us to forget about China. Yeah, but the communists are definitely in the wire, aren't they? They really are, and I got to tell you, I mean, it's it it stopped being funny. It was cute, kind of college campus chic. Uh, to be a lefty and wear a beret and a Che Guevara T-shirt, a racist mass murderer who tortured and murdered people all over the place, lining them up against the wall. And uh, the Democrat Party turned that into fashion. They uh, they also turned Chairman Mao into fashion, okay. people wearing Chairman Mao T-shirts and Chairman Mao portraits on their walls at home. He only murdered 50 million or 75 million people, the greatest mass murderer of humanity in history. And the Democrat yeah. Party in the United States has made him fashion. The, the commies really make some really cool uh, posters, don't they? Che Guevara. I always thought that was pretty cool when I was like, <laughs> you know, 11. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then you ended up as like, you know, and you want around South America and there's still people that have those. They don't. But you know what's missing? Education. Yeah. Yeah. The truth. <laughs> really easy to lead people down the garden the path to uh, the ruin. Well, when remember, remember when Barack Obama, mentored by a communist, Frank Marshall Davis, uh, who made a Communist Party voter, John Brennan, CIA director, John Brennan tampered in our 2020 presidential election. Uh, Barack Obama went to Cuba to visit with the Castros, who he admired and loved very much. And he posed proudly in front of a building sized wall mural of Che Guevara, who uh, would have uh, lined Barack Obama up against a wall and shot him for fun while eating somebody else's food. Um, yeah, they're, uh, we defeated the Soviet Union. We didn't defeat communism. And the commies are repackaging and reselling it over and over again around the world. They resold it in Venezuela under Hugo Chavez. Very popular. Oh, this is great. And then he laid waste to the country. Now it's a B-pole. People are, even their gang members are fleeing. And the left here is waving them into the country and give them the keys to your daughter's bedroom because they're not liberals, they're the left.
Do you believe that the Russians interfered in the 2016 campaign uh, election? Well, I, they, they meddled, but I think China meddled too. But and why I think do you say countries, China meddled too? And you too? want to know something? Why do you say China? Why don't you just say the you. Russians meddled? Because I think China meddled also. Now, the Democratic National Convention begins on Monday in Chicago, Illinois. People are fleeing the city like it's already on fire. Semaphore types. Here comes the Democratic National Convention protests. The protests. They got the protests coming. And uh, Dave Weigel says, protest organizers in Chicago expect between 30,000 and 40,000 people to join Monday's march on the Democratic National Convention and are asking the city for a permit that would get them closer to the event itself. Their spokesperson, Fayani Obama Mijana, uh, probably not from Chicago originally, we're going to march regardless, but we're fighting for the best route possible. They hate the Jews, you know. We've got our park permit, but the city has refused to allow us to use porta potties, a stage, and a sound system. Well, you guys are like self-contained porta potties, I think, aren't you? Aren't you amazing? So it starts Monday. Uh, expect mayhem. Expect violence. Expect chaos. Expect anarchy. Um, and expect the news media to say that it's mostly peaceful. Did you see Muhammad Ali's ex-wife? Muhammad Ali's ex-wife is pro-Trump. She's a pro-Trump doctor, Khalila Ali. Just amazing. Uh, let's do number 28, number 28. See, I stand up and say what I believe in. If you don't like it, I don't care. So see, that's me. You know, you got a problem with that? You got a problem with me. There she, you go. She's that's got a problem with that? Yeah, I wear my Trump hat every day. I wear my Trump hat every day. what you think. I got, I got half of my family are... Democrats. I'm sorry. Do I care? No. Do I but care? We're still family. <clears throat> but we're still family. Uh, that can be a sad, sad situation, can't it? The uh, the one-time wife of the uh, boxing great, the legend Muhammad Ali, Doctor Khalila Ali, she's a Trump person. 